So the next design that we're going to talk about today, and also I, I want to note, even though these uh, videos were done in a particular order, uh, this does not mean to say that any of these things are, uh, you know, the best design is the reversal followed by the multiple baseline followed by the change of criteria. It's just the order I put them in. Uh, but for now, we're going to talk about the changing criterion design. The changing criterion design is a series of phases where a predetermined criteria is developed for each phase. And that's usually a number or a duration. Uh, it is a really underutilized design in the literature, and it's actually a really strong design. When we take a look at a graph of what it looks like, uh, you're gonna see how it how it looks, and it's pretty, it's pretty interesting stuff. Um, but a functional relation is said to occur when the behavior meets the criterion in each phase. So in other words, the behavior will always conform to the criteria. Uh, an added number to that is called bidirectional change. Bidirectional change is when the criterion returns to a level from a previous phase. And you can do this to really strengthen your argument. It adds a level of experimental control. And most of the time when you do see a change in criterion design, uh, you'll see the bidirectional change occur. Uh, and the graph I'm going to show you on the next slide actually has that. Um, present there. So let's take a look. Okay. Now this comes from 1976, Hartman and Hall. Uh, so you can check that out. But if you look, they're targeting the number of problems completed and they have phases A through K. Now phase A, or the baseline phase, uh, what they did was they ran uh, just to see how many would, they would get correct. And you would see that the one day they got four, the next time they got two, and then the third and fourth phase they got zero. So when you sum those, you get about two correct, you know, about two average correct. So that's their first criterion, and that's in panel B. When the criterion got to the two correct and they got to B three days in a row, they moved the criterion up to three. And if you notice, the first day in panel C, they got zero corrects, and then they got the three corrects in a row, and they moved up to four. Then they moved up to five, and they lengthened the, the amount of time that the person had to get five correct. That helps demonstrate a functional relation because they're getting exactly what they need to get correct. Then they drop back down to three for six correct, seven in panel G for three correct, eight for panel H. They had to get three correct, uh, eight correct three times in a row. And then they went up to nine and then they went back to eight. Going back to eight is an example of the bi-directional change. In other words, the behavior will come under the control of the treatment and the treatment can get the behavior at any level that it needs to get at. And then if you notice to wrap it up, they went right to 10. So they move back up again. Uh, and this is a pretty strong design. So in other words, if, I'm, if I need to be convinced that the treatment impacted the behavior looking at this data, uh, because I'm looking at the level across phases and how quickly the behavior met the criterion in each phase, I feel very, very good that the intervention was what caused this behavior change. So the main pro of this design is it's excellent in its ability to determine a functional relation because you're literally the more phases you have where it's meeting criteria and the more confident you are. Uh, the criterion is developed through an initial baseline data, so I really like that there's no randomness. Uh, however, some behavior can't be moved in this manner. Uh, you'll notice they got a number of correct problems. Uh, in, the, in the old ABA literature, you'll probably find something about uh, decreasing cigarette consumption using a changing criterion or decreasing a problem behavior in some systematic fashion. Again, that can't be problem behavior that's extremely severe in the moment, uh, but you know you can use it for problem behavior too. Uh, it's basically anything that you want to increase systematically the amount of correct responding or decrease the amount of uh, problem behavior occurring. Uh, but there's not a large amount of literature utilizing the design, and that's something to keep in mind. Uh, my colleague and I actually submitted a paper using a changing criterion design, and hopefully that that goes through. Uh, but that's the change in criterion design in a nutshell. What you really want to look for is the number of data points in each phase, and also if they did the bidirectional change or if you do a bidirectional change, if the behavior comes under control in any of those interventions, you're usually in really good shape. So that is the change in criterion. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for checking it out. Uh, and I will see you for alternating treatments design, which will be the final design we're covering in this brief video series. Thank you.